Um, can I ask a question? Just a very simple question. Is it, is it a crime to be a striker these days? It's a very simple question I want to ask. And I would like an answer. Is it a crime to be a striker? I'm not sure what Germany's tactic were for trying to score against France. I mean, we can talk about the penalty, which I thought was a very, very soft penalty. I think, come on, that was a, a lot softer than Boateng's penalty. Um, you look at the German defensive mistake once Boateng got sobbed off. But were Germany ever really going to score in this game? Because, you know, because I mean, because I was rereading online when um, Germany were having um, most of the possession, you know, and everything. But it's like, as I said to people, possession doesn't win games, goals do. So when people were saying, oh, look, man, France are not in the game, they can hardly get the ball, I was like, no, it doesn't matter because Germany are not creating any clear cut chances. If Germany were creating chances and were getting and had shots on target, then I'd be like, okay man, France, you need to do something. Germany were hardly creating that many shots on on on, on, on target. So um I think that um because people will say that oh France sh they don't deserve to be in the final. This is a controversy, it's fixed. And I say that's that that's that's a lot, lot, lot of crap. That's a lot of crap. Because they should have played England, or England flopped against Iceland. And Iceland deservedly beat them. All you can do is beat what's in front of you. And they faced the world champions. So, you can say all that stuff before, maybe, but they faced the world champions and they beat them. As in, for me, I think overall France deserved to win because France had much, much more bites and much more of a cutting edge than Germany. Germany's approach play was fantastic. I thought the Zilich had an amazing game. And Hector, bless his soul, he did his thing, but it's it's Hector. It ain't Bart Simpson, a.k.a. Lamb. So, but my th problem with Germany was, I think the way Germany were, were, were playing was what Joachim Love wants. I don't think Joachim Love actually enjoys having a striker. I don't think he actually enjoyed having to switch it up back at the World Cup. What you, how you saw them playing was how he wanted them to play because he wants them to mimic Spain. But, f um, newsflash... Spain's football is finished. Their reign is done. Spain's reign is done. And that mentality of football doesn't make sense. The possession football game doesn't make sense. It's stupid. It is stupid. You cannot fill the team without a striker. You cannot fill the team without... I'm sorry, it's, it's completely stupid. The most complete team that we've seen at the Zero... Who, who have they been? It's been Italy. And what do Italy have? Italy have two strikers. You have to play strikers. But you look at France, man. Um, I, for me, I just thought that you know they did what they had to do. Because you know you're looking at at a zero zero, and yes, that was a momentous decision. I thought that was a very soft penalty. Yes, I thought it was a soft penalty, but at the end of the day, I didn't know where Germany was. If it was a case where Germany were like putting France on the ropes, they were cutting them open, they were, they were putting their first lorries into saves, they were last ditch tackles, clearing us off the line, and then France got a penalty, then I'd be like, oh man, that is so unfortunate. But for Germany, you weren't doing much. So, and I thought that, okay, will this wake them up? But even I was thinking, saying to myself that, okay, you've got Sani up in there, but you don't have a recognized striker. And you look at France, say what you will about Giroud. Him just being there, it helps the structure of the team. It helps Griezmann. It helps Payet. It helps um, Pogba as well. But you're looking at what Griezmann did. A lot of Griezmann's good play came from what Giroud was doing. Knockdowns, layoffs, link-up play. Him cutting inside. And Griezmann knew that there's always going to be that totem pole, that immovable force around that 18 yard box area who he can play off of because that totem pole keeps the, the defenders preoccupied and, and frees up um, the attacking midfielders like Griezmann, Paye and, and so forth so to do, do their thing. Um, but, I, but for me, I mean, you, you've got to say, I mean, before Boateng went off and I think maybe before the second half, I thought Boateng was the best player on the pitch. But I think overall, over 90 minutes, Griezmann stole the show. I still thought Payet did his thing, but he didn't really have as much juice as he had before. But Griezmann, not even about, about the goals. Forget the penalty, forget the goal. 
he was a problem for Germany. His acceleration, his speed, and the precision in, in the precision which which he was running in, especially making those darting runs. Every time he had the ball, he always knew when to run with the ball, how to run with, with the ball, and finding those tight spots and tight spaces. Hence, why he was fouled so many times. Um, but you look again. Did it? Did it? It jump. What did I tell you, man? Keep a winning team. He kept a winning team, and those boys did his thing because it's so cool. Who cares whether he plays for a relegation team? Sissoko put in an amazing shift. He put in an amazing shift. Pogba, second half, he, he grew into the game. And I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Who made that second goal? Because that second goal was really the, the, the killer blow. That was made from Pogba coming up at the side. And he sent Mustafi to Kansas on a one-way trip. He literally sent Mustafi to Kansas on a one-way trip. And... Totally dis dislodged him, left foot cross, put in there. New York tried to put it away, didn't really deal with it, and boom, there you go. Griezmann. Um, but then that came from a defensive mistake, where Boateng got soft, sobbed off. Um, but I think, you know, you're looking at it overall. France are in the final. And they deserve to be in the final because they've beaten who have come beyond them. So... I don't want to hear any rubbish of controversies or anything. And for me, they deserve to beat Germany. And the reason why they deserve to beat Germany is because of how Germany were, were playing. As in, when I was even looking at them 1-0, uh, then I was like, where is the goal going to come from? Are you really going to try and walk your way through there? Because give it up to Umtiti, man. He did his thing. Umtiti did his, his thing and he defended well. Um, Umtiti and Koscielny, they did their thing and they defended well. But I think Deschamps... That's, you know, sometimes you just have to do the right thing. And Deshaun did the right thing of like, this team gave me my best performance. I'm going to stick with the same exact team. I'm not going to change anything. And you can, unless there's an injury, you can expect that these guys have now given me two big performances, given me two wins. I'm taking these these boys um, to, to, to the final on Sunday. But yeah, um, look, France did deserve to be in the final. They did their thing, and what I thought would happen is that, you know, the individuals caused Germany problems. I mean, our French defence was still a bit iffy, but I was like, without a striker, you ain't scoring. Simple as that. Without a striker, you're just not scoring. It's not happening. I mean, we have to talk about what they'll do facing um, Cristiano and Nani. That's a whole different thing, but, you know... Um, Germany just have to say to themselves that, you know, I mean, because, because I said again, 2014, once closer came into the team, the whole dynamic of the team changed. It became a lot more balanced. When Gomez was in the team, the team looked a lot more balanced. It looked like a proper team. Without Gomez, without a recognized striker, you're like, the team doesn't seem balanced. Great approach play. Out of ideas when you come into the 18-yard yard area. I don't. I'm not sure what Marigotta actually did when he came onto that, that pitch. Mola, sorry, because Mola is not a striker. He's an attacking midfielder, a very good one, but he's not not a striker. So I don't know what was he smoking. But I think for France overall, man, I mean, and Loris produced an excellent save, amazing save. I think it was from Mus, Mustafi. They've made the final. They've made me the final, so you've got to give congrats to, to, to France. Um, and because, because, you know, you, you look at it on, on, at hindsight. I'm not sure whether France beat Italy. Because for me, I knew that looking at the injuries that, that Germany had, I always felt like, you know, France, they're going to beat Germany. Without Mario Gomez, that was just the key loss. If Italy went in with, with their guys, no injuries... I'm not sure France beat Italy because of Italy. The fact that Italy have two strikers, they would have caused hell and havoc for that French defense with Pe with them Pele and um, Ede that have caused them problems. So it's about matchups. But kids, what is the moral of the story? What is the bottom line? You don't have to have a striker who scores goals. That's not the point. The striker in your team helps your team. France, just having Giroud there, helps the entire team. It makes the team a lot more balanced. And there's a symbiosis between defence, midfield and, at and, and attack. Everything is interconnected and it helps everyone. 
by Germany not having a striker and people trying to play this false nine, it looks pretty, it looks nice. And the funny thing about this is that if you're a player, you feel like if you're actually playing well. So for so guys like Ozil and Cruz, they feel like if you know, we're, we're, we're playing well possession, you're, you're, you're playing well. But when you look at it on a bigger landscape, then you know that, no, there's something missing. And that's where the coach has to say, no, there's something missing here. It's not about keeping possession on the ball or nice little long crossfield passes. We have to be incisive. We have to be decisive. We have to try and get shots on targets. We've got to try and get men inside the box and shooting on goal. If this that's not happening, it's not for football. It's um, Tiddly Wings. So remember, follow me here on, on Twitter, and I will be building up to... The final, of course, France against Portugal, because I will probably do a retrospective of when these two met back in Euro 2000, the semi-final, that these two met, because that was, that was a very controversial game. And maybe be doing like a full-on focus on, on Portugal, what they need to do tactically, and a full-on focus on France, and what they need to do tactically. So we're going to be doing... So, 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 so there's going to be some videos coming over the next few days, and of course, of course, my main pre-match analysis preview. Germany... It wasn't so to be for France. Just one more, one more step. Just one more step for them to be crowned European champions. En la France. Vive la France. Merci beaucoup, mes amis.